Hey, welcome back to Kampai Kitchen. Today, we're making Odin, which was specially requested by Kate and John Mark. For those of you who don't know, Odin is a big bowl of soup with a lightly soy sauce flavored broth where you put in a ton of other ingredients. So we've got daikon, we've got carrot, we're gonna boil some eggs, as well as some age tofu, which is deep fried tofu, and some fish cakes, some cake crab, some sausages, all kinds of good stuff. And so you're gonna put it all in here, cook it all together, it's all gonna get the really good broth flavor into each item. And because it's sort of a warm, homey heart feel, today we're drinking Kirin Ichiban because it's the best. That's right, it's the best. Come pie through that. Come pie. <laughs> Now, Odin's gonna start out a lot similar to the uh, okonomiyaki recipe, so you may wanna refer to that one as well, where you're making a dashi. The only difference is this time I'm making a lot of dashi. So we've got our kombu in our pot of water, and we're gonna turn that on to high, get that boiling. At the same time that we're gonna be making our broth, we're also gonna start boiling our eggs. We're gonna put our eggs in a pot of water, bring it to a boil, and let it sit for a little bit. We want them to hit soft boil, not go too much farther than that because they're gonna cook in the Odin pot once we're all said and done. Now, when you boil an egg, you wanna pierce the bottom. If you don't have a special tool for that, let me show you what to do. You can either use a thumbtack or a pin or any kitchen knife you have that's extremely pointy and hold it and pinch it right up next to where the blade is. We really wanna get close and just barely pierce the fat end of the egg. And what this is gonna do is this is going to allow the egg to release its pressure so that it doesn't crack. While both of these things are coming to a boil, we're gonna get our veggies prepped. Now, when we cut up our veggies, it kind of depends on how quickly you're gonna wanna eat this. It can take anywhere from a half hour to an hour for everything to simmer together for it to really bring out its flavor. And if you want it closer to a half hour, cut everything a little bit thinner. A lot of people really like to make Odin and then put it in the fridge and let it sort of marinate and soak overnight. We don't have that kind of time today. So let's start with our daikon. So our first vegetable we're gonna chop up is, is this a vegetable? Yeah. Yeah, that's a vegetable. vegetable. The first vegetable we're gonna chop up is gonna be a daikon radish. And what this is gonna be is nice wide pucks. And when it's boiling, it gets nice and soft and is one of our favorite parts of this whole dish. So we're gonna start by slicing it into rounds and then peel it. Conversely, some people do like to peel it first and then slice it into rounds. I don't know, it's up to you. And I'm gonna slice it into about one inch rounds. Once you've got your round, you can either peel it with a knife if you feel comfortable placing your knife against the vegetable and running it around and just taking off that top layer of skin. If you don't, don't be scared to or feel like you're breaking with tradition by grabbing a vegetable peeler. It's a lot safer and you can just zip around each one. Once we have all of our daikon sliced and peeled, we're gonna score it across both sides and this is gonna allow the broth to seep in even better. All right, so our eggs just started boiling and we want those guys to go for about another five minutes now that the water's come up to temperature. What we're also gonna do is we're gonna drop our daikon in there as well. It's a little full, so I'm probably gonna get a little run over, but it's just water, so it's gonna be okay. All right, so now that our kombu also came to a boil, we're gonna throw in four packets of our katsuboshi because we want this to be a really strong broth because we are probably gonna have to add some water to it because our final destination is a little bit larger than this pan that we're cooking in right now. And while those are blanching and that's settling down into a nice dashi stock, we're gonna hit our giant carrot. Dun, dun, dun. Big carrots, big. The biggest carrot in the world. All right, so we're gonna peel and slice this carrot very similarly to how we did the daikon, just a little bit thinner. When we slice the carrot though, we're gonna give it a little bit of that French angle so that it will be a little bit quicker on the cook as well. So we're gonna throw these carrots into our blanching pot with our daikon, and it's gonna get boiling for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, depends. If you poke them with a chopstick and it goes right through, they're ready to go. So it's been about five minutes since we put the eggs into boil, 
So we're gonna pull them out with a slotted spoon. We're gonna drop these eggs into some cold water so that they slow down the cooking process and it also should make it a little bit easier for us to get the shells off. And while those are chilling, we're gonna wash and slice up some green onion while we've got a second. And we're gonna cut the green onions really nice and thick because we want them to be visible and easily gettable when they're in the soup. Easily gettable. E easy gets. I want it, I got it. I want it. And with that, all of our vegetable prep is done. I think that earned us a comp pie. Comp pie! Hmm. Are you following Lily? Comp pie! Com time to crack our eggs. Every time I'm always a little nervous, maybe it didn't cook enough. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's good. Right now, if we were to slice this, it would be right on that edge of being a little bit on the medium side. All right, so while our first set of daikon is done parboiling, we're gonna set this aside onto our cutting board. And this is really important that you do. Don't add these straight into your bowl. We need these to dry off. We want the water as much as possible to soak out of them so that the broth can get sucked into them. Some people who go so far as to pat them down with a paper towel. I think that's a little much. I'm just gonna let them kind of cool down, kind of dry themselves off. They're, they're really hot. There's a lot of steam coming off them, so they should be fine by the time we're ready to actually put them into our broth. And since those are finally done, I think we earned another comp pie, don't you? Yeah! I've always loved the comp pie. Mm -hmm. All right, so now the time's come to put our broth into our nabe pot. And we're gonna do this the same exact way we did last time where we line a strainer, because even the finest sieve is still gonna let some things out but we really want to make sure that none of that comes through. We want a nice clean broth. We use a big old clay nabe pot. You can get these at most Asian grocers or you can find them online as well. Now that we've got our broth in our bowl, we're gonna add that light soy sauce flavor. And when we say light soy sauce, we actually mean light soy sauce. This isn't sodium free or low fat or anything that would be an American idea of light. This is physically a lighter colored soy sauce. Now we're gonna drizzle some of this in. Most recipes will tell you a couple tablespoons. They'll tell you three tablespoons. It varies. Really, it depends on how much broth you have and how heavy of a flavor you want it. The more you add, the more salt you're gonna have in your final product. How much are you gonna use, Wayne? I'm gonna put it in until it tastes good. Ugh. Yeah. A little bit more. There we go. It looks like with my pot with this amount of broth, we want about four tablespoons in there total. He measured it with his eyes. I've got the power eyes, because I come pie. <laughs> come pie. Odin is not just some veggies though, so we've got plenty of other stuff we're gonna throw in here. We have a more traditional fish cake or chikua. Uh, not my favorite, but it sometimes tastes a little good in there. We also have some chicken meatballs, or what do you call these? Skune. Skune. We also grab some K crab. If you've ever made hot pot, it's a lot like that. So kind of whatever you're in the mood for, you can throw in this broth and just let it cook. It's delicious. We also have some Berkshire pork sausages. We have some little tanuki ball sacks, which are, <laughs> oh. what? Kin chaku. Kin chaku. We also have some kin chaku, which is a age tofu or a deep fried tofu with some mochi balls on the inside that they wrap up and cook. It's also called a tanuki's ball sack. And the reason for that is because they made gold coins in Tanuki ball sacks. So like Tanuki's ball sacks are supposed to hold nice things. And so you got the sweet food in there. A little wow. bit of history for you there. That's a weird fact we didn't want to know. Well, now you know ancient Japanese gold coins and Tanuki scrotes. Kanpai. <laughs> Kanpai the Tanuki. Kanpai. <laughs> We also have some just plain fried tofu because we love it. It's got a nice sweetness to it. And finally here we have some kiri mochi, some pre-made mochi that we're gonna drop in there. This is really good. 
the sweetness of mochi with kind of a savory soup is surprisingly tasty. Last time we were in Japan, we had one that was in the, what was it, a pumpkin or a squash stew? Yeah. And they had just a mochi ball in there and that sweetness compared with all the savory around it, so good. It's a nice break to whatever you're eating. So now the only thing left to do is put all of our ingredients in our big pot and then throw it on our little butane burner. Now these guys are designed for tabletop. That doesn't mean you shouldn't still have some good air circulation because the last thing you want to do is have the butane not burn correctly and end up making everybody sick. So we will have some good ventilation, but this pot will be on top of a nice butane powered stove while we're all eating it. So it keeps cooking the whole time. We had a little too much broth, so we did have to reserve a little bit to the side. That's gonna be great, because as we eat it down and put more stuff in, we can add more broth to it. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some mirin. This is gonna give it that little bit of sweetness that it needs, and so we're just gonna give it a four circles or so across all of the food items. All right, so we're gonna throw our lid on. Then we're gonna throw our little butane stove on our tabletop and we're gonna pull the little pieces off and eat it on an individual plate. You don't wanna get too much of the broth out, so if you've got a nice slotted spoon or a nice mini strainer, these work great for pulling out the different pieces you wanna eat. And as far as condiments go, cause you know I'm a sauce boss, we go with karashi. This is a Japanese spicy mustard. It's delicious and you'll find it right next to the wasabi. Even comes in a very similar little tube. A Little bit of this with any of these items is delicious. And that's how you make Odin. Make your broth, chop up all your veggies, blanch them if they're not cooked, buy a bunch of other stuff you wanna throw in there, throw it all in there and stay warm during these cold months. I'm also gonna stay warm with my classic kanpai. See you out there. Kanpai. Kanpai. Kanpai.